192 is sound and light on and off thyristor. For this project, we're using more components, including the disco motor, alarm integrated circuit and speaker, and both LE, uh, the red and green LEDs. Let's turn on the slide switch. Also, the transistors are included. Now, when I turn on the slide switch, everything activates. I am going to turn off the slide switch and look what happens. Everything stays on. Disco motor is spinning and lighting up. The alarm is sounding and the red LED is on. The green LED is connected directly to the slide switch so it will go off when the slide switch is turned off. Now let's hit the S2 switch. That resets the circuit. When I hold it down, the red LED lights up because I think it's directly connected to there, but when I turn on the slide switch, everything goes on. Let's do this again. You have to turn off the slide switch before you hit the press switch to turn the circuit off. One more time, and there you have it. 193 is fan on and off. For this project, we're using the programmable fan, and we have the transistors and LEDs again. Turn on the slide switch, and the LEDs and the fan will all come on. Turn off the slide switch and only the green LED will turn off. The programmable fan is displaying a mess messages. I am going to push the press switch and look what happens. It shuts off. The circuit shuts off and then you can turn it back on by turning on the slide switch again. Now you have to have the switch off in order to, for the circuit to stop because even though it will when you hold down the press switch it will come back on when you release it the slide switch is still on you have to turn the slide switch off first and then push the s2 switch the press switch to stop the circuit completely project 194 is add one for this project we are going to turn on the slide switch and the tens digit of the U29 display will show zero. Now we have to hit the press switch and now the number turns to one. Press it again, it turns to two. Basically we are increasing the number by one for each time that we hit the press switch. And it will go up to the number nine before it resets to zero. If you hold down the press switch, the U29 display will cycle through the numbers quickly. Project 195 is add 10. I modified this circuit by moving the press switch above the U29 display rather than on the left. The, turning on the slide switch will show the number zero on the tens digit of the U29 display and when we push the press switch, nothing happens other than the display quickly lighting up fully. But after you hit the button 10 times, the number will finally change. That's because we're adding 10 instead of 1. You have to hit the button 10 times once again to change the digit. And you can hold it down if you want to cycle through the digits more quickly. I'll just go all the way up to 9 and then back. It will go all the way back to 0. 196 is add one at a time. I removed the two snap wire between points A and B 
which are here, and we will turn on the slide switch. Now both digits of the Utoy 9 display show zeros, and we're going to hit the press switch, and the ones display changes first. Then after you hit push the S2 switch 10 times, the tens digit display will change. And the U29 module goes all the way up to 99 before it resets to zero. To make this project more fun, you could play a guessing game with either yourself or with other players. And while you cover or look away from the display, you can hold down the press switch for a short time and release it. And you would then guess a number and see if you are right when you look at the display. Project 197 is plus one beeper. I added the speaker and modified this project, uh, the circuit quite a bit, and we will turn on the slide switch. Both digits show zeros, and then we will push the press switch. The speaker beats every time I hit the press switch and the display changes. The display increases by one. And then it will beep steadily when you, but at a fast rate, when you hold the press switch down. And you know what? I can probably go all the way up to 99. And then you hit the press switch again. The display resets to zero. 198 is counting sound. For this project, I added the alarm integrated circuit as well as the speaker. And we're going to turn on the slide switch. The display shows the two zeros. And we are going to, you can either push the press switch several times or hold it down for short periods. Let's see what occurs. The display, the speaker, will produce a siren sound. And it counts how many times you've pressed S2. So basically, the U29 display counts how many times you hit this switch, and the speaker provides, and the alarm integrated circuit provides sound effects. Another counting sound requires you to move the two snap wire here over to these points, from point A and B to point B and C. Let's see what occurs now. Now we hear a different siren sound as the display increases. 200 is push start disco. We're going to turn on the slide switch and the disco motor lights up, but it may not spin. We have the red LED here as well. We're going to push the press switch. And when you release it, the disco motor actually continues to spin at a very slow speed. When you hold the press switch down, it will rotate at full speed. But when you release it, it slows down considerably. Let's do that again. Turn off the slide switch. Turn it back on. The LEDs all light up, but the motor does not spin. Push the press switch, and you'll have a very slow spinning motor. The reason why it doesn't spin at full speed and requires you to hit the or hold down the press switch is because the red LED is limiting the current to the disco motor. When you hold down the press switch, you're bypassing the LED completely. Sometimes a burst of electricity will get the motor to rotate slowly, even if the red LED is limiting it. Well, it is not being bypassed. 201 is faster push-start disco. 
I inserted the green LED across points A and B on these three snap wires, and I'm going to turn on the switch. Nothing happens other than the LEDs coming on. Now I'm going to hit the press switch. When I release it, it may be very hard to tell, but the disco motor spins a little bit faster than it did in the previous project. Turn it off, turn it back on again. And that is because the green LED, when it is in parallel with the red one, increases power to the disco motor, which makes it easier to start and helps it to spin a bit faster. 202 is medium speed disco. I modified the circuit a little bit to incorporate all three of the main LEDs. And I am going to turn on the slide switch. Now this time, the disco motor spins slowly though, without the assistance of the push switch. All the LEDs are on as well. I am going to hold down the press switch. Holding it down turns the LEDs off, the main LEDs off, but now the motor can spin at full speed. Release it, the main LEDs come back on and the motor slows. It is now traveling at medium speed. You can compare the patterns when the on the ceiling if you had the disco cover and you were in a dark area if you could attach one of the disco covers and compare what the patterns look like when the motor is spinning at half speed or at full speed. You can also try to look for the green, red, and yellow LEDs on the ceiling or wall and try covering them with your hand to see how much they affect what you do say. The main LEDs are easier to see from the sides since they spread their light over a wide angle. However, the LEDs in the disco motor concentrate their light. So they are more br that's why they're brighter when you look directly at them. And they are also brighter because of the types. These are modern LEDs. They're better quality than these. These are older style ones. Even though they still make them today, they're bulkier. I've been waiting for a while, a long time for this, and it is finally here. Project 203, the last project in this Snap Circuit set, is the finale. This project is relatively simple to operate, as complicated as it looks. And what's interesting is that it includes all of the parts in this set. We will turn on the slide switch and some of the components will start up. But now we will select game one. And now the circuit will perform all different kinds of actions. The LEDs will go on and off and the display will cycle through different patterns. If we hold down the press switch, the programmable fan will spin and display messages. Unfortunately, we have to keep S2 held down for the programmable fan to stay on, but if we hold it down long enough, we will see all of the messages that it can hold. I'm going to hold it down at least long enough for my name to be displayed. Now the LEDs may not be very bright because after all, this circuit is using a lot of power due to all the components it includes. I'm going to release the press switch. The programmable fan stops. And if I want, I can reset the circuit and select game two or three so that 
the LEDs and U29 display change at a faster rate. I'm going to hold down the, pro the programmable thing again. And so, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration of the projects in Snap Circuits Arcade. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch my videos. I am hoping to display more Snap Circuits and other electronics kits real soon.